In this tutorial, we'll cover how to get started with SketchUp for Schools. So SketchUp for Schools is an offshoot of regular SketchUp, which is a 3D modeling program that you can use right inside of your browser. So this version is unique because it is specific for students and teachers, and it comes along with any Google for Education program that you have set up with your school. So to access the app online, simply go to edu.sketchup.com app. So after you type in that URL, you'll be brought to this page here where you can sign in with Google or Microsoft, depending on how your school is set up. So simply click on one of the buttons and follow the prompts to log in. Once you're signed in to SketchUp, you're going to see this home screen where you can create a new project, open projects, and more. On the left-hand side, you'll see more information about your account, your Google Drive that you're connected to, any imports or exports of files that you brought into SketchUp. You can add a location, so that goes and is tied into your designs. And finally, we have the curriculum option here, which allows you to see some other projects and tutorials to walk you through how to build different simple projects to advanced projects in SketchUp for Schools. So be sure to check out some of those different projects in the curriculum tab. Back here on the home tab, let's go ahead and get started by clicking the start modeling button. So now you're logged in and ready to start modeling in SketchUp. So as soon as you get on here, you'll notice we have a character here. This is actually a real person based on a real person. And this is Dr. Temple Grandin. This entity is added here simply for scale. If you choose to keep her there you can keep her there otherwise if you select and then hit the delete key on your keyboard you can remove the entity from your project so let's start by talking about basic move tools here in SketchUp so if you are using a mouse to orbit you would simply hold down your scroll on your mouse just like so to move this way to essentially pan, you are going to hold the shift key while also holding down your scroll and move back and forth. Now let's take a look at some of the basic tools on the left toolbar. So here we have the select tool, which allows you to click on an object or entity and select it. Here we have the eraser tool, which allows you to erase parts of either lines or shapes of an object. We have the paint tool, which allows you to paint your objects with different textures. You can also use the eyedropper tool to get a specific color and uh, essentially be able to paint that as well. Here we have the basic line tool, which allows you to draw shapes from lines. So here you can see I am simply drawing so some simple lines and you can see I've created a shape there. There's also this freehand line tool where you can just draw by freehanding it, just like that. So let's practice using our eraser tool. You can see here, if I click on one of the lines, it's only gonna delete that line. So that gray part there, we'll undo that. So the gray part here is called a face, and we'll talk about what we can do with faces here in a moment, but you'll notice if I delete or erase a line that the face disappears because we don't have a completed uh, shape for that face to appear. Sometimes that can be useful if you're building walls or things like that, um, but for the most part, for this tutorial, we'll just we'll leave that there for now. But that's how you can use that erase tool. Now here we have the arc tool. So this allows you to draw arced lines. So if I wanted to draw a simple arc from here to here. I would simply select the two points and then I could draw my arc. So again, I'm selecting an edge, selecting another edge, and I'm able to complete that arc as you can see there. So there are other arc shape tools as you can see. So regular arc, two point arc, three point arc, and pi. So be sure to check all those out. Next up, we have our rectangle tool. This allows us to create a rectangle. So I'll select this one here. So instead of using a line to create a rectangle, I just quickly did that there. There's another one. 
So you can also create other shapes. So here's a rotated rectangle. You can get something like that. Now let's create a circle. So again, I just selected there and clicked on the circle option. And now we have a circle. And we can do a polygon as well using the same steps. There's also a text tool where you can click on that text button and then, of course, fill out your options there. And voila, we have a text object. So now that we have played around with these different shapes, the line tool, let's talk about the push tool. So here is the push and pull tool. This allows you to select any face and essentially intrude or extrude it. So let's take a look at what that looks like. So here I'm going to just take a basic rectangle and I'm going to push it and pull it, as you can see there. So there's a lot you can do uh, with this tool. So it doesn't have to just be up and down. You can also pull out and, and so much more. So as you saw, so on the first example here, we created a basic rectangle using the line tool and then we used the arc tool to create some different lines on top of that face there, as you can see. So when we did that, we created different sections that we can push and pull, you can see, to create a really custom shape. So maybe that's like, uh, like a waterfall or water fountain feature and some type of landscaping project or something like that. Or maybe it's just something we want to delete. It just depends. So be sure to check out that push and pull tool. You'll use it a lot here in SketchUp. The next tool on this little toolbar is called the follow me tool. So to do this, you need both a face and a line to use it. So I'm going to draw a simple, let's see, simple line, curvy line like that. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to click that follow me tool and I am going to select this face. And as you can see, it's taking that face and it's following it along the line to create a totally custom shape there. So kind of a weird shape, but that's ultimately how you can use that is simply by selecting a face and then following a path from that point that you selected. Pretty cool. So I'm sure you can imagine how you might utilize that tool to create custom shapes beyond your typical geometric shapes. And then we also have this offset tool here. So this allows you to create shapes within that shape. So if our shape is a rectangle, we can select the, the face there and create essentially a, an offset version of that same shape. So where this might come in handy, so I'm going to switch back to my push-pull tool, is we can then really customize those different shapes by combining the use of these different tools, as you can see there. Pretty cool. So let's, let's try that again, but let's do it on our circle over here. I'm just going to pan over, and all I need to do is select the face, and then I can build my edge from there. So I've created some different uh, edges here that I can then push and pull with my push-pull tool. Now let's take a look at the solid tools. Those are located right here, and if you expand the menu, you'll see the other tools within the solid tool menu, such as outer shell, union, subtract, trim, intersect, and split. Let's rotate over to this rectangle we created over here. I'm going to use that push pull tool to make a rectangle, as you saw there. You can increase, decrease the size of that. And then to make this shape a solid, all I'm going to do is select all of the different lines and edges and faces of this object, right click on it and click make group. So now that I have this group, I'm ready to essentially merge it with something else so that we can use those solid tools. So to have a separate shape, all I'm going to do here is copy, so control C and then control V to paste it. So now we have two objects that we can use to test out these solid tools. So what I'm going to do here is I'm simply going to overlap these two rectangle solid shapes and then I'm going to click on that solid tools menu and I'm going to select the two 
different shapes using that shift key. And as you can see there, using the, the outer shell option, it essentially merged them and then it made the inside hollow. So essentially just keeping the outer shell of the two merged shapes. So let's go ahead and undo that by clicking the undo option. And let's take a look at some of the other solid tools. So let's create a shape out of the overlap between the two shapes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click the intersect option and I'm going to click on the two shapes to create that uniquely uh, custom shape. I'm going to undo again. Now let's take a look at the, let's take a look at the split option. So again, select split and then choose the two. So now I have just go ahead three separate objects there so I created three unique objects based on the both the overlap of the different uh, shapes there versus just the two shapes I had so go ahead there are plenty more as you can see solid tools to explore here so check those out now let's take a look at the next option here which is the move so this as you saw me using earlier was able to select a shape and then simply drag it around using that move tool. The other options here include rotate, so I can rotate an object on a plane by selecting it and then choosing how I want to rotate it. So a lot of stuff you can do there. And then finally we can unlock essentially a transform panel so that we can transform the object however we like, as you can see there. So those move tools are specific to the object itself and include move, rotate, and scale. So check out these tools in the toolbar. Here we have some different measurement tools. So tape measure allows you to measure objects within your project by simply clicking two endpoints and it'll tell you the length. You can also see the length of an object in your project by selecting, for example, um, when you go to create a new line, let's see here. So I'll click in, and you can see in the bottom right corner that that number is changing. That is the length of that object. While I'm doing this, if I need a specific value, I can also just type it in. So I'm going to do 40, and that's going to create a line that is set to the measurement that I created there. There's some other unique tools in here, including dimensions, text, section pane, protractor, and axes. Here we can preview what a walkthrough of our uh, project looks like. So walking allows you to view it from that perspective. And if we click on that second option there, which is the position camera, we can move the camera so that it's basically looking at it. You can do a walkthrough of your design if you're building out architecture and things like that. And then look around basically allows you to look around from that camera view. And finally, down here, we have our different uh, positioning tools, which of course, so orbiting, panning, magnify in form of zoom, zoom to the window, and zoom extents, which is going to give you a full view of all of your objects there. So be sure to check those out. There are different hotkey options for all of these. Those can be located in the tutorials provided by SketchUp directly. So now that we have taken a look at some of these different tools on the left toolbar, let's take a look at the right. So here there are some different options, including entity info, some helpful instructor tools, materials. So you can search for different textures and materials. So if I wanted to give something a brick exterior, all I would need to do is select it from materials and I can paint faces with it. Pretty cool. So there's a lot of options there to explore. You can also define the style in which you're viewing. I recommend leaving it on the, the default setting, but be, feel, feel free to explore there. You can also give object different tags. There are different scene views different display options, info. You can set the specific units within your project. 
To wrap up this tutorial, let's take a look at the components menu. Within the SketchUp universe, there are a lot of community members that add different 3D models to what's called the 3D warehouse. So you can access those by clicking on the components option in the right side menu. And then you can simply type in something. Let's just type in chair and you'll see some different options that have been loaded into this components menu. So that comes in handy when you are trying to build out different projects and uh, especially architectural designs. So if you're building a, uh, some type of building or room, you don't want to build out all the furniture, you can use that components menu to import models into your design. So be sure to check out that components menu. Finally, let's go ahead and save our project. To do that, you can click save, but before doing so, you want to give your project a title. So simply click on Untitle and type in your project name and click OK. This is going to allow you to save directly to your Google Drive. So that's a really convenient feature to be able to access and save different models in your project. So that is an introduction to SketchUp for schools. Be sure to check out the tutorials provided by SketchUp to learn more on how to use the different tools in more detail. And be sure to check out our other videos in this channel playlist to learn how to use different digital tools.